I don't have to. Wow. Let's go. Well, let's take you back to the days of being the band announcement announcer for, for <clears throat> the Morris Brown Marching Wolverines. What are your fondest memories of that? I suppose my fondest memory is having been asked by uh, uh, Mr. Cleopas Johnson to become the announcer. And that was a period of transition for me in leaving Morris Brown as a student and going down the hill to the Interdenominational Theological Center as a student preparing for ordained ministry. And, and then to be asked to come back. Now, I was still doing things for my fraternity, but had not been asked at that point to do things for the school, even though I had shared with the choir, concert choir and traveling with them as well. Uh, and don't sing and don't play an instrument, any of that, but uh, would speak, I guess, is the way I got around. And that was phenomenal for me. But I'm also reminded of transition. When I entered at Marsh Brown as a student, and we referred to the band as the combo. Had about 25, 30 members of the marching band. 35 would have been pushing it uh, to see it was that many. So it was just a combo. Uh, we didn't have students here at the, the college, didn't see it as a real marching band, but just a, a gathering of students who could play instruments and they made commitment. But then when Mr. Cleofus Johnson came, and the interesting thing is that he came having been the band director at Booker T. Washington High School right down the street. And they loved him at Booker T. Washington uh, High School. And when he became the band director here at Mars Brown, and those students, when they graduated, guess where they came to college? Mars Brown College. Mm -hmm. And then he also used some of those students who were still students at Booker D. Washington High School who, who played with the Mars Brown College band. So he built a band, a real marching band. Now, one of the key things about human nature is everybody enjoys success. Everybody enjoys excellence. And so as the band was growing, other people wanted to become a part of that which they perceived as successful. And so then from my perspective that the Marsh Brown College Marching Wolverines played a significant role in the growth and development of the college itself. So, talk about the respect and the pride it gave you as an announcer and the band members. Oh, ab absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, for me as an announcer, for members of the band, for uh, students and faculty and administration uh, at the college, everybody liked it. Morris Brown alumni loved it because that's our school. So then that was significant indeed. It was just mentioned to me. It says, now were you the announcer when we went down to Florida and him? I said, yep, I was the announcer. And they had an announcer at FAMU, but that announcer was on full scholarship. The announcer at Marsh Brown was a student of theology at ITC, <laughs> having matriculated at Marsh Brown College. Uh, and yet that year, when Mars Brown Band, and they had an old six feet five announcer who said, uh, presented to you, the Morris Brown College Marching Wolverines, all the way from LA, lovely Atlanta, a band, take the field. And guess what they did? They took the field. And all of those Floridians were blown out of whack. Mm. Morris Brown, they didn't expect much at all. Mm. And yet we began, oh, I began to feel sorry for the fabulous <laughs> FAMU band because for the first time, they really had competition <laughs> that they were not prepared for, didn't expect and blew them and all of their followers out of their minds. So uh, that for me was exciting. It was a high, 
high <laughs> moment uh, in the life of Walter Kimbrough and the band and the college and Atlanta oh, wow. to know that yes, we could do it. We are somebody. If you can recall your very first day of announcing and what that was like for you and, and again, what you said before the band came out and took the field. Well, I need to go back in, in Herndon Stadium while I was a student at Marsh Brown, I announced high school football games. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't play football, but I was a football announcer mm -hmm. uh, in, in the stadium and, and uh, connections that helped me to do that. And that's how I got through college. I needed hustles. Um, but, to, but to do that uh, was kind of preparation mm -hmm. of doing it on the road. Mm -hmm. It's like the old saying, charity begins at home and then it spreads abroad. Now what was important to me is with Mr. Johnson, Cleopas Johnson, gave me the script for it and then gave me an opportunity to add to it my personality. So with the, te the information, the technical information that he provided, and the personality of Kim Bro that it came together. And he gave me that freedom. And so for me, that was very, very important. So that first day, that first day you, you announced the Wolverines, the Marching Wolverines. Yeah. What was it like? It, it, was, it was a new era for me. It was that something that I had not done before. Speaking was not new. Uh, I was preaching while I was a student, uh -huh. so before I went to seminary, I was preaching, so I had an opportunity to preach and to teach and be before congregations and classes, so I was very comfortable with that. So it was transferring of that gift set in another arena. How did you feel when Morris Brown lost its accreditation? How did you feel when the band was no more? Very, 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 very sad. Uh, from my perspective as a United Methodist pastor, it didn't have to happen. Didn't have to happen. Mm -hmm. And I see the grace of God mm -hmm. still at work. Mm -hmm. Two decades, we should be dead. Mm -hmm. And yet there are still signs of life. Mm. Even though the institution may be perceived as being on life support, that life is still enduring. Mm. Uh, I, I argued years ago as a seminarian that what needed to, to happen in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. a citadel for higher education for African Americans, mm -hmm. but we needed an Atlanta University. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that this is the original campus mm -hmm. of Atlanta University. All of this land mm -hmm. was Atlanta University. Across the street on Beckwood Street, faculty members mm -hmm. of uh, Atlanta University lived in those units across the street. The presidential home, uh, they had their own farm mm -hmm. on, this, uh, on this property. So, so then this was Atlanta University. Before we knew it as Founding Hall, it was Stone Hall. Mm -hmm. Stone Hall was Atlanta University. Wow. And so then, the, there was a fund said that you all need to come together. Mm -hmm. Clark College, Clark Atlanta University was in South Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Gammon Seminary was on that campus and they owned where the projects are that uh, the United Methodist, what is now the United Methodist Church, owned that property. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was major. Indeed, Marsh Brown College was over in Fourth Ward, mm -hmm. uh, in the area near where David T. Howard it was high school when I went there, but it's a, it's a middle school now. Mm -hmm. So in that Fourth Ward community, Atlanta University had built a, another campus, Marsh Brown College moved here, Clark College moved in the area by Morehouse and Spelman, so we became the Atlanta University Center. Mm -hmm. I felt that what really needed to happen Mm -hmm. was that we needed an Atlanta University 
with different schools. Mm -hmm. That if Morris Brown was a school of education, mm -hmm. and another school could be the, the mm -hmm. a school of science, right. another school could be a, a school of performing arts, and and then instead of having three football teams have one football wow. team and compete with Georgia Tech and wow. the University of Georgia and the University wow. of Alabama, if I'm making yeah. sense. So then wow. the power of all of these institutions coming together, rather than then mm. pinching parts of us off and having us in competition with each other, wow. when we come together collaboratively, wow. that it would be an awesome university indeed. I felt that 50 years ago. Wow. Is that what needed to happen? Wow. But to who would listen? And part of that is ego. Wow. You'd only need how many presidents? You'll only need how many boards of trustees? One. I mean, so, so that's, that's real. That's a great idea. Wow. That, I, I thought, thought so 50 years ago. Wow. More than 50 years ago. Excuse me, for this last question. For this last question, can you set up here and get his profile? Yeah. That's a great idea. I mean, that, that would I have been so. Have the different colleges, but still be one and... Did anybody? Nobody even... Wow. Never thought of it like that. And it's so true. Have one AU. We, we, even though Marsh Brown became the, the number one band in the center, what would have happened if we had had one? Oh my God. Oh my 500 God. 500 members. Did anybody, nobody latched onto that? Nobody latched onto that idea. Nobody. That is, never thought about that. And Morris Brown would, would have still been thriving. Yeah. Still been Morris Brown. And then when the seminary came into existence, RTC uh -huh. came into being, it would have been the School of Theology. Wow. Wow. You ready? Okay. Um, Reverend Kimbrough, with some thought, what is your hope? What is your dream for the band to be reborn, just as Morris Brown is in the process of being reborn? Yeah, my position is we will not forget our history. Mm -hmm. And in remembering our history, that we will communicate that to others. So others will begin to get to the vision. I, I, I hope that what's happening now with the video will send a message out that possibilities are unlimited. And that we're still committed to excellence. I, I hope that through this video, that the, that the message is sent out that Morris Brown alumni, men and women who have been a part of this musical program, I was about to say musical ministry, mm -hmm. and it is a ministry, are serving in significant positions in institutions of learning across the vastness of this nation. Mm -hmm. So that Morris Brown is in fact alive mm -hmm. and well and not dead mm -hmm. because we are an expression of what happened to us while on this campus. Now somebody would say that this is a high point in the city of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And when you come up on this campus, you up high. Mm -hmm. And so that we represent the brightest and the best. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to take a back seat to anybody. And so the band, the men and women mm -hmm. who came this way and who participated as a member of the marching Wolverines mm -hmm. all the way from LA, lovely Atlanta, that we are somebody, we are a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm that we represent excellence mm -hmm. in every sense of the word, mm -hmm. in every conceivable expression, mm -hmm. and that we had giving leadership to us that some of the best qualified musicians that America and the world could provide, mm -hmm. quality training, quality education, great inspiration, tremendous commitment, mm -hmm. and carried out to the letter of the word what it means to be successful at whatever it is that we agree to be involved in. I'm excited.
to be able to testify that I'm from dear old Morris Brown. Awesome.